Okay, this lecture briefly covers the basics of a chemical battery. Please make sure that you watch my chemical battery uh, demonstration video as well as this video here, which obviously accompanies it. Okay, take a look at that demonstration now if you haven't already done so, so pause the film. Okay, and now based upon that demonstration, here's then what you saw. Okay, so first of all, I've got this beaker right here like so which has the copper sulfate solution that was in blue. And then right here, this strip of metal right here is copper. Okay, and then they had the other beaker over here on the left, excuse me, on the right. This guy here was that yellowish green solution. This was zinc sulfate. And then right here, this metal strip is zinc. Okay, and then supplying the chemical potential energy necessary to form a potential difference between the copper and the zinc is what's called a salt bridge. It's an electrolytic solution. It's slightly acidic. I used salt water, and that was in that horseshoe-shaped test tube that you saw. So let me go ahead and draw that like this. Like so, and the test tube itself is referred to as a salt bridge. It's an electrolyte, salt water. It's slightly acidic. It supplies the chemical potential energy necessary to form a potential difference. Okay, so when the chemical potential energy here is doing work, essentially, what happens with the zinc is that positive ions, positively charged atoms, are essentially drawn off of the zinc into the zinc sulfate solution. So positive ions, I'll just use this symbol here to indicate that, are drawn off of the zinc. The energy necessary to do all this work is supplied by the salt bridge. Okay, then therefore, if we have positively charged ions being drawn off of the zinc, this then means that the zinc itself becomes negatively charged. Like so. Okay, and then over here on the left with the copper, once again, the work that is being done here, the energy necessary to do all that is being supplied by the salt bridge. In this particular case, negatively charged electrons are being drawn off of the copper into the copper sulfate solution. So negative electrons, I'll just use this symbol here to indicate that, are drawn off of the copper. So if the copper now has lost negatively charged electrons, this then means that the copper overall is positively charged. Like so. So then therefore the positively charged copper strip is at a greater value of electric potential than the zinc is, and then therefore there's a potential difference between the two. Think of this right here as the top of a hill, for example, and this right here is the bottom of the hill, and then I showed the potential difference by using the voltmeter. Okay, now the symbol that we use to describe all of this in circuits, which we'll get to a little bit later on, is the following. The symbol that we draw to represent the battery up there in the top board looks like this. Like so, where these right here are wires that are going off to whatever else it is that we have in the circuit, like light bulbs and switches and so on. And then this right here is the symbol for the battery itself. Okay, this side of the battery where you see the longer line, that right there is sometimes referred to as the positive side of the battery. Well, to be a little bit more precise, it's actually the region of high potential. Okay, and then this smaller line right here, this is sometimes referred to as the negative side of the battery. Once again, a little bit, to be a little bit more precise, this is referred to as the region of low potential. Like 
so. And then the potential difference from high to low potential, that potential difference here is just written as V. And that's the voltage. Okay, now to conclude this short lecture here covering the basics of the chemical battery, here's another, another demonstration of a chemical battery. Okay, this little ping pong ball right here has two metal strips that are attached to it. And then inside the ping pong ball itself, attached to the two metal strips, is a noisemaker and what is called a light emitting diode. A light emitting diode, an LED, lights up at extremely low voltages. So the amount of current that will actually be flowing through this in just a moment is next to nothing. But it's enough to light up the light emitting diode and activate the noisemaker. Okay, now where is the salt bridge in all of this? In other words, what is the supply of the chemical potential energy necessary to do the work that is necessary to form the potential difference? Well, I am the salt bridge. What I'm going to do is just take two fingers, attach them here, for example, to the two metal strips, and then lo and behold, it lights up and makes noise. Okay, now as I do this, I am losing chemical potential energy as I do. So then therefore, if I did this process for a long enough period of time, I would eventually get hungry. <laughs>